Hello, I'm Lux, and this is the wonderful Ember. Yeah, and we're doing a late night recording because we just finished watching the rest of Voltron. Season 4, episodes 1 through 6. AKA Season 3, the rest of it. So this is our thoughts on... Voltron, Legendary Defender, Season 4, episodes 1 through 6. Once again, they nailed the ending of the season. The build-up was perfect if you don't count Netflix. <laughs> I don't know why they split it up like that. So weird. I think they were just in a hurry to get some episodes out and they didn't want to wait for a full season. Also, I think there was some analytic data that pointed out that people usually binge watch six episodes at a time. Hmm. Otherwise, why do such a silly thing? And tick off the creators just a little bit. Oh, uh, but wow. They just keep going up and up and this gives me big hope for the Shira reboot that apparently DreamWorks got their hands on. Because if they do it half as well as Voltron Legendary Defender we could have a pretty good show. Moving back to the show. Really great except for that one episode. <laughs> I personally enjoyed it myself. This is one of the few times where me and Ember go hmm. And just to clarify we're talking about the stage show episode. I've made Lux pause a few times and I was cringing a lot, mainly because I was afraid that they were going to go in a slightly different direction than they did. And because of that, it still could have happened at any time. So up until the very end of the episode, I had that. Ah. As I was concerned that they were going to become these fantasy type stars and that the message was going to be completely lost that they were just going to be actors and have you know fantasy popularity not that this would end up helping the coalition i didn't have that fear what i was afraid of is zarkon would see these and attack them in the middle of a show and they would all they would have is fake weapons and it wasn't until they started adding the actual lions back into the show that I was like, eh, they'll be fine. I didn't actually expect a worm like that. I expected more like a mind control device, not a parasite. Also, I like how you saw the Star Wars reference in that episode and I saw a Star Wars reference in the final episode. <laughs> <laughs> the first reference was actually, help me, what was his name? Bebo. Help me, Bebo. You're my only hope or something like that? Yes. I'm like, I see. And the reference I caught was in the final episode when they have to go down to the core of the planet and they show the shaft and it's looking down. I'm like, that looks just like the shaft they show in Star Wars, A New Hope. And I was like, oh, that looks very Tron. And I agreed with her. I was like, yeah, I, I can see the Tron look too. But to me, it was like, it felt very like that shaft that Luke and Leia have to swing across. And I'm suddenly remembering, I just blasted it. <laughs> uh, also, another point that I saw was... I'm like, okay, they're going to power up Voltron and they're going to alter the core, not fly off the planet. When she was like going, okay, I'm going to focus. I'm like, yeah, because Voltron's a giant conductor of the good kind of quintessence. He could probably touch that thing and it would turn good and it would stop transforming the planet like it did. Well, it wasn't about it being good. The energy was exerting pressure. The energy was powering a terraforming system that was increasing the gravity of the planet. If Voltron took control of it, he could probably change it or stop it from doing what it was doing. That's what I thought. And then they go flying off the planet. I was like, well, that goes my theory. Yeah, I wasn't expecting them to fly off the planet. I was expecting them to deal with the problem on planet. Going back to episode one of this season. Lux, it's radio. No one can see your air quotes. I was just about to say I air quoted that for a reason. <laughs> uh, because it's technically whatever number came after the end, which I think was five. So this would be episode six of season three. We still haven't seen anything of inklings we keep getting. <laughs> like one, the beginning of season three with Shiro coming back and we're both like, Something's wrong with Shiro. And then 
both of us on the episode when Matt comes back. We're like, something's gonna go wrong. Something's gonna go wrong. Something is so not right here, and we couldn't put our fingers on it, mainly because apparently it wasn't there. That, or they're doing what they're doing because I'm pretty sure they've already been greenlit for the actual season four, when season three was most of the way through production. They probably had a heads up so they could write stuff in for the following season. So the stuff that we're actually feeling may be stuff that's setting up for stuff in the next season. Either it's not there, or they're setting us up for the long haul. And we're going to see this stuff happen in the next season. And it wasn't just the part with Matt and Pidge, because that was one thing that was triggering us. But remember, we were getting that feeling in more than one place. I'm specifically talking about something feeling off in the six episodes we watched. I don't think of anything, because all of it made sense to me. I wasn't getting any, getting any feelings about Lotor in particular. I pretty much knew what was going to happen, except for that one part where his lieutenants turned on him. Because I expected her to walk up to him. And turn the other two over. Yeah, because she seems the most loyal out of the group. Though that also explains why she didn't kill him. Because I think that this may have been a backup plan that he had set up. That if they turn on me, stun me, and whatever. Because he got out of it. Also the classic, oh look, I can dislocate my shoulder. Yes, and also that whole, I understand you did what you had to do. And I'm going to do what I had to do. Also, I knew the moment he heard that broadcast and he headed straight to it. I was like, yeah, yeah, he's going to go and take out whatever's going on because he's like, that's a good opportunity for me. Because when your father is the leader of the Golra Empire and has ordered your execution, it's a good time to join the opposition. Now, the real question is, is he going to become the sixth ranger? No, I don't think he's sincere enough to be the sixth ranger. Though we'll see how hard he falls for Allura. Hmm. He's going to have some stiff competition from Matt, though. And Lance. <laughs> Lance can't devote himself to one female, so he flirts with everyone. Yeah, yeah, he does. Even species that probably aren't remotely compatible with him. He just loves the attention, as you can tell. Razzle-dazzle. Yeah. And I'm probably unintentionally spiking the mic. A little bit. So... What were the highlights for you? Uh, uh, obviously not the one particular episode. Yeah, pretty much everything else. You know, they started that blitz and, you know, you hear the plan and you're like, okay, how is this going to explode? We didn't realize when we were thinking that, that the answer was literally going to explode. <laughs> yeah, you thought it was going to explode. I thought, like, something's going to go wrong. It's going to be unpredictable and it's going to go wrong horribly. I think I lean to you right between episodes and like, this is the part where everything goes wrong. Yes, yes. Though, of course, that was while they were still busy fitting in uh, Star Fox references. <laughs> we mean the frog we saw in the cockpit and I was like, Star Fox, no! <laughs> I apologize for the, all the people wearing your phones. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, hmm, no rabbit. We could count the dog as a fox. Also, the animation and cinematography was beautiful in these last couple episodes, especially that shot of Voltron after the ship comes crashing down. Okay, that used up most of the budget right there. Speaking of using most of the budget, oh my god, the cow scene. Yes, that probably right there used most of the budget, and it was awesome. And if you've watched that scene and you're wondering why we're saying it used most of the budget, panning shots like that are extremely expensive. Have you ever noticed why they almost never use them? <laughs> because when you're drawing a figure as a camera pans around it, you have to redraw everything in the scene, including the backgrounds, which are usually extremely detailed. That's a lot of drawing. <laughs> So, one, there was probably a lot of computer assistance here, and two, there was a lot of budget spent on that joke, which was marvelous. Moving on. Well, it was awesome because, okay, who would think Lance would know how to milk a cow? Also, I still love that all of his clothing is still blue. They haven't, you know, gone and rebranded everyone. He still has blue lion slippers. Though, you know, to really be accurate, one should be blue and one should be yellow. <laughs> He's going to probably have to steal a pair from Hunk. They wouldn't fit. Also, 
we got one reuse shot of the lions transforming. To me, it was like, that's out of nowhere. Why didn't they? Oh, they need to fill up just a little bit of time. Also, it's a hero shot, so it's okay. <laughs> At least it's not like five times in an episode where you're like, yeah, they're running at low on budget on the episode. So they're just like, let's transform them a couple of times to fill up some room. That's kind of one of the reasons that we get clip episodes in a lot of shows is because they've blown the budget on most of the season. So they kind of have to fill in, hey, we already shot all this footage. All we have to do is animate the in-betweens. Not to get on a tangent, but I believe we did something on Legend of Korra, or other people have. Moving on, there was a reason there was a particular episode in Legend of Korra that was a clip episode. There's just so many fun moments in these last six episodes. <laughs> just everything was so well done, and how intriguing everything is, and I want to know where Lotor's lieutenants are going. Because they can't go back to the Empire. They can't go back to Lotor. They're probably not going to go to the Alliance. But the way they phrase things, at first I was like, are they going to the Alliance? The Rebels? Is that where they're going? Because they specifically said, we only have one choice left. And I'm like, okay, where did they go? <laughs> also, I can't wait to see how this whole thing with Lotor plays out. Mm-hmm. It would be really interesting, especially with the change up in the Lion Pilots. Because... Hot-headed Keith is no longer leader of Voltron, which means that Lotor might get a fair hearing from Shiro. Hmm. Because Keith is kind of busy being a Blade of Malmora. Which was an interesting change-up. I don't know if it disproves our theory or not. Shiro convinced the Black Lion to take him back. Mm-hmm. I was worried the entire time. was like, oh, Shiro's back? Will this be where our theory about him being altered... In some way, or a clone come out? Is this where things go horribly wrong? Shiro suddenly turns on everyone? The world may never know. <laughs> and going back to speak on the episode that made poor Ember cringe, I love the Power Ranger references throughout that, and those stage plays they'd over in Japan and malls and stuff. Yes, the early on versions just screamed, you know, a mall sentai show. Love that. I'm sitting here going, this is a great episode, look over at Ember. Oh, she doesn't seem to be liking this episode that much. <laughs> no, because there's no way they're broadcasting that stuff on secure channels. And you know that there are Galra that have seen this because the mall cop loved the show and had action figures. So other than that particular episode, were there any low points for you? That was pretty much it. And a slight amount of disappointment with how obvious the earlier scenes with Lotor played out. You know, being called in front of his father, being formally dismissed, making his oh-so-heartfelt plea not to be sent away, continuing his plot and being caught. And yes, being caught was not part of Lotor's plan, but it was part of my overarching theory. Mm-hmm. Because Nati uses the cat's eyes to see the cat always belonged to Hagar in Voltron. So now the question is, was Nati a spy all along? Or is this just something Hagar can happen to do? I don't think she was a spy all along. I think Hagar expected something like this to crop up. That's why she may have loaned her cat to Nati. So just in case anything like this happened, she could take over Nati and... What's really interesting about the particular scene where Lotor cuts down Nati is the fact that he was angry, which means that he cared about Nati, but he knew the only way to break Hagar's spell was to kill her. Assuming that he even knew it was Hagar's spell. You know, they got rid of the tracking device, and then they're discovered. Nati was the only one who was with him, therefore... The thing is, I think he knew, or at least heavily suspected i think heavily suspected because he does not trust his i almost said mother which is technically true we don't know it should be true but what i want to know is why after hagar got her memory back she's still playing this whole high priestess thing not that she isn't fully qualified apparently judging by what she can do but how do you just step aside like that and serve as a servant to your husband? Because she was already so loyal to him. And also her mind's probably still very twisted. 
What's really interesting is the scene where she looks more like her original self and she was looking into some type of floating mirror and then she transformed back to Hagar. The team from Korra and Avatar that is doing this is amazing. When they get the right budget and a company that lets them do what they want, they are doing amazing stuff, especially once we got past the first couple of seasons where it was mostly like, we're going to do our Avatar and Korra stuff and then start tweaking things out because we lay down the foundation for all these great characters and then we start layering unique stuff on top of that. And that's how we got this awesomeness. I don't have any particular nitpicks that I can think of. That stuff that's lingering, those things like, I don't trust Matt. I don't have any reason not to, but I don't trust him. I trust Matt. I was expecting when they plugged his device into the castle that it was going to short something out, that it was going to download a virus, that it was going to broadcast their location. I was mostly leaning towards a virus. And if Matt was betraying them, he wasn't betraying them to the Galra. There was like a third power entity that we haven't seen yet that he may be more aligned to because he's been out of the space for a while. So he could have run into stuff, especially as people who may have helped him fake his death because of that monument that Pidge went to. Also, that was a great episode. Lots of feels, nice flashbacks. Great setup. That was like, yeah, he's not dead. Yeah, I'm like, I'm not buying this. He's not dead. Great use of flashbacks there, too. There's just so much good with this season. I think the only episode that, even though I liked it, that fell flat was the Voltron, uh... Traveling Circus. Yeah, Voltron show, as it were. Because I also expected them to do more like, use this opportunity to sum the story, but also make heavy references back to the original show by actually having them actually say lines from the original show. I know, I was expecting more of an 80s Voltron callback there. Because it would have been a great way to summarize the show, but use the old 80s show as a way to do this. Kind of like the play episode in Avatar. Because that's the thing, we didn't really get much of it as, you know, summarizing the seasons. We did see the laser monster, we saw Zarkon, we saw the lions, but we didn't really get that. Here's the story up to this point. Like I said, that's like the only episode that I feel was the real weakest out of these six, and I think the season as a whole. So any other points you'd like to go over? Just touching back on how interesting it is the way they're dealing with six paladins, five lions, because Keith kept insisting that he didn't want to be leader. Also, that reminds me of another spot in those particular setup episodes with the whole Keith and Blade of Malmora. I didn't expect them to take that so well, because they were all set to, like, stab him. You know, angry at him, like, you cost us this, you almost killed us, this stuff, and then, I want to do this. Bugger off, okay, then? Because you almost got us killed. Thank you. Go have fun with those other people. You seem to care more about them than us. <laughs> expected more like that, not, we respect your wishes. Here's a group hug. <laughs> Well, they were mad at him throughout because he was shirking his Voltron duties and not showing up for the parades that he thought were stupid. And then at a time when they really needed him, he wasn't there. A part of it's easier for them to take because, hey, look, Shiro reconnected with the Black Lion. Therefore, I don't have to do this. Yeah, I think that was the biggest thing is because Shiro was able to reconnect with the Black Lion, so that helped them. But still, it's like, wow, I didn't expect that 180 the other direction. Well, they also tend to take their lead off of Shiro, so it's like, if Shiro's giving it his blessing, that's kind of the end of it. Ah, and speaking of the end of it, do we want to start wrapping things up? Mm-hmm. So, this was a very interesting season, and the fact that Netflix split it up kind of interesting it was actually an okay place to split it up if they had to but still oi but i liked the episodes they were good there was only one real weak one overall can't wait for more anything else you want to bring up or shall i go outro <laughs> outro this has been our thoughts on voltron legendary defender season four episodes one through six a.k.a. the rest of Season 3. Thank you for listening. 
usual YouTube please. Like, subscribe, share, comment, watch other videos. Enjoy Lex's art. You can find more of it on DeviantArt, Tumblr, Twitter, Google+, Facebook, Mastodon, Reddit, and wherever else on the internet he can find to post it or where someone else may have reposted it. Really enjoy his art and would like some of your own? He takes commissions. Check link below for pricing and availability. Pricing stays pretty consistent. Uh, availability is subject to change. Just want to toss a few coins our way to help keep the lights on. Uh, we have a Patreon and a coffee. Patreon starts out at a dollar with monthly sketches and voting rights on future monthly sketches. And coffee works in increments of three dollars, one time, no long-term commitment. We understand, it's hard to commit. Thank you again.